now we will discuss about the size of the cell size of the cell if we talk about the size of the cell in plants and animals you will find that this size varies a lot we can see a smallest cell we can see means we will find that a cell can be smallest like in bacteria which can be from 0.1 to some micrometers and from here the cell can be as long as uh, the nerve cells obviously we cannot see most of the cells we cannot see most of the cells because these cells are very very small and cannot be seen by the naked eyes at the same time there are certain cells which are too long or too like they, they can be seen without the use of microscope if we talk about the smallest cell if we talk about the smallest cell then we can quote the example of the bacteria always remember the size is measured in micrometers and this size the size of the bacteria can be from 0.1 to 0.5 micrometers so here the size is very very small this bacteria is of very small size and so cannot be seen with the naked eyes at the same time when we talk about the egg biggest cell if we talk about the egg of the ostrich egg of ostrich it is very big and can be seen with the naked eyes egg of the ostrich is such big and it can be seen with the obviously it can be seen with the naked eyes now this size of the cell truly depends upon the function of the cell if we talk about the nerve cells if we take the example of nerve cells the tails of the nerve cells can be very very long and it can be up to like 3 it can be up to 3 micrometers and can be seen with the help of without the help of the microscope now if you take the example now we are when i'm saying that uh, in the example of nerve cells or the nerve cells are the one which can be seen with the naked eyes and these are very very long so when we talk about the nerve cells in the case of elephant it will be long but at the same time if we take the example of the nerve cell of a rat in rats also the nerve cell will be long what does it proves that the size of the cell also depends upon the function as we all know the function of the nerve cell is to give the passing of the messages the pass it passes the messages giving and taking of the messages and the tail the fibers are very long and when these fibers are long then only it will be you know they will be able it will be possible for them to give the messages or to pass or to give and take the messages so it is like when we say take the example of nerve cell these nerve cells will be longer in the rat also in the elephants also in human beings also because it is how the size is size is depending upon what it is depending upon the function also so here we are discussing about the size of the cell if we talk about the smallest one then we have the example of the bacteria which cannot be seen with the naked eyes we need to have microscope 
Now when we talk about these cells which can be seen without the help of microscope or which can be seen with our naked eyes. So here we can quote the example of the egg of ostrich. Again nerve cells will be very very big. In any of the animal if you take the example of any animal it will be bigger one. It will be tall, it will be long as such because the size also depends upon the function of the cell. Now this size will be different in different animals and plants depending upon their own size and shape depending upon the function of the cells about which we are discussing or talking about. So size depends upon the plant or animals plants or animals size and also upon their function. Now we will discuss about the shape. Shape of the cells. Is the size is different in different plants and animals. As the size depends upon the function in the same way the shape can be or shapes will be different in different plants and animals and even the shapes will be different in different organs. When we are talking about the organs it means now we have we know this we have discussed this that a body is consist of different systems. Different organ systems are made up of different organs. Organs are made up of different tissues and tissues are nothing but the when the cells come together then they form tissue. So shape of the cells depends upon the cell the shape of the cell depends upon the area to which it belongs. Shapes can be of a cell can be of different shapes maybe columnar maybe cuboidal maybe elongated maybe spindle sometimes irregular sometimes you know like many different shapes can be seen in different different kinds of organism and different different organs. So we can have a cuboidal shape, we can have a rectangular shape, even we can have a bean shape if you take the example of the uh, stomata the guard cells are of bean shape it can be a columnar shape it can be a spindle shape it can be spindle shape it can be irregular if we talk about the amoeba it can be irregular and even in the case of WBC the shape of a cell is irregular. If we take the example of the fat cell it can be a cylindrical or a spherical shape then even if we talk about the neurons Again the shape is somewhat irregular. You take different examples in different different examples you will find the shape is quite different. Now if we talk about the sperms 
again the shape is different so here we have many different kind of uh, different shapes which we can see over here cuboidal then rectangular bean shape columnar spindle shape irregular even cylindrical or spherical and again like if you talk about the rbc again the rbcs are of different shape somewhat we can say by concave so shapes again depends upon the organism in which they are present and it also depends upon the function to what they are related to what wbcs are this one is amoeba i have drawn amoeba but i am saying that even the wbcs are irregular why wbcs are irregular wbcs are irregular because their function is to clean or cleaning means which type of cleaning to kill the germs to engulf the germs now the germs can be of various shapes and sizes and for engulfing them their body has to be in a shape which can be changed that is the reason wbc are of irregular size and shape now especially shape now when we talk about the neurons again the neurons are very it is a long structure again depending upon the function so these all can be the shape which and even not only this one the, there are many different different shapes and these all can be seen at different different uh, in different organs cuboidal epithelium if you remember so uh, the shape is cuboidal then columnar cells also will find this cells will find the spinal shape in muscles so all these are the shape different shapes of the cells which again as i have said it, the shape depends upon the function of the cell and also the presence where they are present now we'll discuss something about the with the which is present inside the cell that means now we will talk about the structure of the cell if we talk about the basic structure of the cell there are certain things which are present in all the cells if we talk about a cell there are certain things which will be which we will find in all the cells if we talk about cuboidal or spindle or irregular so now we will talk about the structure please note this and then we will move to the next connecting topic before discussing up the structure of this cell we will talk about the theory just now i told that we'll be discussing about the structure of this cell but before discussing the structure of this cell we'll talk about the cell theory or even it can be known as modern cell theory now the cell theory was given by shredin and shon it was given by shredin and shon and this was given by two german scientists actually few more scientists were also there but mainly it is related to this two scientists only now these scientists gave certain points certain postulates which are known as cell theory so what are those postulates first of all all the living organism are made up of cells this was the very first postulate of the cell theory which says that 
all the living organisms are made up of cells in spite of the despite of whatever size it can be very small it can be very big but if it is a living organism then it has to be made up of cells so this is very first one that all the living organisms are made up of cells whatever the size is but if we are talking about the living organism the living organism all the living organisms are made up of cells second is cells are the structural and the functional units we have studied this before also that all these cells or the cells are the structural and the functional units of the life that means the cells are responsible to form the structure we have discussed this in level of organization also that how cells combine and they form tissues and tissues combine and they form organs and organs combine and they form organ system and the bodies form that means the structure is formed due to the cell these are the basic structure of any living organism when we talk about the functions who is responsible for all functions which are going on in our body or going on in any living organism then only cell and cell cells are responsible for different functions going on in the body as we talk about a body a body is made up of different different organs and these all organs are uh, these all organs are responsible for different functions like i use my hands to write we use our eyes to see heart pumps the blood these all are organs and they have their specific functions in the same way the cell is made up of certain components which are known as cell organelles and all these cell organelles also have their specific function all these cell organelles also have their particular fixed functions and these organelles are responsible for conducting all these functions due to all these functions as all these organelles are performing their functions cell is able to perform the functions and when the cell is performing the function in due course automatically the tissues the organs the organ system and the body is able to perform any function so cells are the structural and the functional units of any living organism or of life we'll talk about the third point now all the cells are similar in basic structure and function but they are not identical all the cells are same just now i have given you many examples showing different different sizes and shapes then how we can say that all the cells are same we have also discussed that different cells perform different functions as gut cell if we talk about if we talk about the stomata it is related to transpiration if we talk about neurons they are responsible for the giving and taking of messages so when 
we are saying that all cells have their different functions then how can we say that these are same in their structure and function what this sentence means it means that the basic structure is same a cell will be cell is made up of certain components so all like whatever the cell has will be common in most of the cells we are going to read this in this after this within after this we are going to discuss about the structure of cell it will become more clear at that time but the structure basic structure of a cell is same their function that means if a is related if a is responsible for doing certain function it is it will be responsible in all different kind of cells if b is responsible what are this a and b i am talking about this the components of the cell if a is responsible for doing anything it will be doing the same function in all the cells so the structure and function will be same the cell structure and function will be same but when we talk about overall structure and function of the cell it will be different that means the cells will be same in the basic structure and function but they won't be identical they won't be exact copies so this is the meaning of the third postulate now we'll talk about the next one all cells arises from the previous cells this is the last postulate given by rodolf actually now this says all cells arises from the previous or the pre existing cells how a cell will be formed a cell will be formed when a cell what it does it divides when cell redivides when cell divides and divides new cells are formed so a cell will be formed by what obviously when a when a cell will divide a new cell will be formed so these are the postulates of the modern cell theory now what is the postulate number 1 all the living organisms are made up of cells cells are the structural and the functional units of the life all the cells are similar in the basic structure and function but these cells are not identical this point will become more clearer when we will talk about the structure of the cells and all cell arises from the previous cells that means how a new cell comes into existence just because of the division of the previous cell whenever a cell divides a new cell is formed this all postulates comes or all this is known as the postulates of cell theory now we'll move to the next point which is structure of the cell what is the structure of the cell if we talk about any basic structure of it talk about the structure of any cell there are certain things which will be present in all the cells so what are those things which will be present in all the cells cell membrane which is also known as plasma membrane
then cytoplasm nucleus cell organelles and cell inclusions these five things will be present in almost all the cells what are the five things which will be present in all these cells first of all cell membrane we will discuss all these things in detail but just giving an outline that what are the things which forms the structure of the cell so first of all cell membrane will be present in all these cells cytoplasm will be present in all these cells cell membrane is the outer membrane of the cell whereas cytoplasm is the fluid which is present inside the cells nucleus a uh, structure which is present in the center of the cell if we talk about the plant cell then it is present in the side then cell organelles what is the meaning of cell organelles in this cell different organelles are present maybe mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum lysosomes golgi complex all these are known as cell organelles all these are known as cell organelles now what does this mean children inclusions means whatever see this is a living part this is a living part now all these are living structure whatever non living things are present in a cell maybe fat maybe protein part whatever part is present in a cell that all comes in the category of inclusions so a cell is made up of all these five things cell membrane which can also be known as plasma membrane which is the covering of the cell then cytoplasm which is the liquid jelly like liquid which is filled inside the cell nucleus which forms the major part of the cell cell organelles are the different components of the cell maybe endoplasmic reticulum maybe mitochondria golgi complex all these are present in the cell and this is what the non living part of the cell now we will discuss about the structure of cell in detail but there are certain structures which are if we talk about cell organelles there are certain cell organelles which are present in plants but they are absent in animals whereas even there are certain cell organelles which are present in the other one but the but absent in the first one that means there are certain organelles present in animals but these are not in plants the one which are present in plants can be absent in animals at the same time there are certain organelles which are present in both the plants and the animals so to have a clearer view we'll discuss both plant cell as well as the animal cell all together so that we can also mark the difference between the two and we can also understand the structure of the cell in both the cases very nicely so now we'll talk about the structure of the cell which cell obviously both the cells the plant cell and the animal cell 